Hey everyone, Merrix here, bringing you another video. This one is going to be on Rey Mysterio, Mascara de la Muerte, and I'm sure I said that wrong, so apologies. Um, so Rey is the chase this month, and he is really good. Uh, he's an aggressive powerhouse modern era zombie. Uh, zombies are my favorite, easily my favorite month, uh, typically... Every year, I'm hoping this is no different. 20% uh, more health. Mysterio family gems do 50% more damage. Modern era, 5% more damage. And he has the stock um, De La Muerte gear. He is a coach. These coaches are simply amazing. At 6 star, 26k, uh, moves and gems, uh, trap countdown juggernaut that generate green will create three more green gems. Um, so very, very good, obviously super good on, um, the free Dom, um, and it's escaping me, like, right off the top of my head, I, admittedly, I haven't checked into who else, um, does trap, countdown, or juggernaut gems that generate green, um, I'm sure there are plenty of them, but right off the top of my head, uh, none are coming to me, so there's that. I have four different build sets for you guys, including the six star, uh, but also I'm going to be running two of them um, with much more common trainers and then two with much more uh, rare trainers. You'll see a, a version of each. The strap we're going to have equipped, uh, NWO plate for the whole preview. Whenever you break six or more red gems, increase your red move damage by 75% for two turns. And then also uh, worth noting, Red move damage tier 4 Fury maxed and um, a tier 4 gem damage max. So we're looking at the 125. Well, mm, you can see the 75% gem damage, 200% move damage, and then we got the NWO plate, but that 208% isn't right. We're getting 133 plus the 75. So from this, it's adding even though we're not actually, we don't actually have it yet. It's just 133% um, red move damage, no modifiers there, generic strap, etc. I'm going to start out showing you guys um, the six star move set. Um, so let's just take a look. It won't be the rusty head scissors. Uh, the six star move is the Grim Reaper Rana. It's seven MP black deal 135k damage and choose two rows to make into multiply gems of strength 13 pretty crazy 7 mp black so it's a triple black at six star death from above 6 mp deal 84k damage and make the middle row into blast and then the 667 uh, 6 mp black deal 83k damage and make seven blast gems into red gems so what the Entourage would look like, if you have 17k Santa and Memrock, this would be like the super rare build running triple black with a tiara. What you would do is you would hit the uh, 7mp black and put the row above the middle and below the middle into multiply gems, and this would be strength 16. Um, that would give you 14 gems at strength 16 essentially you're going to be breaking 224 gems it is random what's there on those two rows you should get an assortment of colors it should hit quite hard um if you don't have 17k santa the entourage you see on the right of the screen there is probably what you'd want to run obviously if you have memrock sub him for sammy if you don't have sammy uh, i would use somebody like um typhoon if you don't have Sammy or Memrock, use Typhoon. So that would be the setup. Uh, bad attitude to help recycling, just in case there's no black, uh, maybe. Or you could also use any of the swipe plates um, to generate more gems to 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 add to the the destruction. Um, so that's how I would run him at six star. I think six star he's going to be very very strong, like incredibly strong. Uh, people might be thinking Dominator Drip because he has three black moves, but he's already putting out multiply gems on the row above and below the blast gems, which is what you're going to break. So that would just be wasted on him. So Dominator Drip's a no-go. You'd be much better uh, something like the Tiara, maybe buffing any black gem that was there. 
You could also do the pyro plate, buff in the black gems. You could also do cheap shot. Likely, I would probably do cheap shot, um, unless I had a ton of tiara sitting around, because it's so dependent on how many black gems are there, and it's only 50% more gem damage, so probably uh, cheap shot, potentially head games. Head games would be really good, too, actually, if you have a head games laying around. Probably even better than the cheap shot. Um... So yeah, that's how I would run them at 6 star. Okay, let's get into the first move set, and it's going to start out with rare trainers, and then I'll show you it again with not rare trainers. So keep that in mind. For two of these move sets, you're going to see rare trainer and not rare trainer. Um, so this first move set, let me get it set up for you guys. I like this one a lot, and if it goes right you can do 7 million damage on turn 2 after the sub, if it goes right. And that is with a higher dom than I'm going to have. I practiced this uh, when I had the preview dom. I do not have the preview dom now, so uh, we're just going to be using the one that I has, which only adds one blue gem. So um, it does hit really hard, and it is quite good. Um, few things to note, like most of the Juggernaut or Countdown gems, if they go off uh, when you're in a pin, you do no damage and you don't recycle, and it, that's kind of a bummer. But Zombie Attack, um, Submission, generate 20 random sub gems, do 114k for three turns, remaining uh, subs turn into Blast, kind of similar to uh, Taker's sub, pretty much... Um, Hall of Fame Taker, Springboard Body Bag, 6 MP blue, deal 74k damage, choose a 3x2 area to swap into red, and the Split Head Moonsault, 7 MP Juggernaut Gem, deal 85k damage and make 10 randos into Juggernaut Gems that will increase your blue gem damage by 40%, so that's 400% blue gem damage, and then on the countdown it makes 2 random uh, gems into blue gems at the end of the countdown, of course Dom would make that three, four, and five at the different tiers. This one, it's only going to add one. Entourage we're going to run. Again, this is the more rare 17k Santa setup, um, allowing you to get two sets of Juggernaut gems out turn one, potentially buffing 800% uh, if you do not cascade that blue gem damage, which hits, as you would anticipate, pretty hard. Uh, Ray should be very solid at boss battle, too. <clears throat> Um, he's got a really big finisher, and uh, NWO plate makes that bigger, so a lot of possibility there. Okay, there's Dom, you can see mine's adding one extra blue. And then, uh, keeping Santa on for the blue gem damage, this is not, we're not going to play him like the 17k. It, oh, yeah, sorry, this is the rare one. <laughs> we are going to play them like the 17k is working. I just got uh, cat aggro, so I am now playing one-handed petting my cat. So this is the what you're going to do. The idea is you put the jug gems out, and then you make a 7 match. Hopefully don't cascade. Um, and then you put the juggernaut gems out again. Then you swipe, and it does one countdown, um, buffing the blue gem damage. Then you hit the sub, and then on your turn... Um, what it does is it blows up the board with all of that buffage. Uh, things can go wrong, though. So then it's sometimes two swipes, and if they pin you, uh, no, it's not good. But that's always the case with uh, jugs or countdowns. If you get pinned, things can go south. So start out, check the jug gems. Uh, looking at the board... I don't necessarily love it, don't necessarily hate it. Let's see what happens here. Try to stay away from the Jug Gems. I think we're going to go here. We're only going to hit one Jug, and I mean, you know, as long as the wild card doesn't land here, we're likely okay-ish, depending what drops in. That's actually Butamus. That is exactly what we want. More important is keeping the jugs alive for the first swipe to get the buff on everything. 
I'm going to take this black swipe here. So there we go. There's 800% blue gem damage. We're going to hit the sub. Very unlikely. He is going to cascade us to a pin because we moved all the way to one. And then on our turn, every remaining jug gem is going to spit out three blues. There's enough of them that it should be the entire board. And we should hit for a metric butt ton. That's very scientific. Metric butt ton. All right, here comes the carnage. Boom. So that's even with a low dom. Um, doesn't really matter. You can see 7 million reduced to 5.6. So 7 million after the sub. So Ray is quite good. Uh, granted, that's all with rare stuff. And it doesn't always go perfectly. Uh, obviously, you can cascade and then you're into two turns. And it really only goes... And that you're going to hit like four... Uh, half essentially so three and a half million um if you only have one set of jugs out ish um and then you know you might have to swipe twice so the ai will have two chances to pin you and possibly mess it up right so not the end of the world he's still going to hit hard um if all your jugs are out there it's still going to be close to the seven million range like you just saw and that's not like a high gem damage strap, Fury 2, any of that stuff. Anyway, let's see what it would look like um, with less um, rare trainers. We're just going to go some gem damage. If you have one of those uh, 18k Cenas, I believe it's uh, the Acrobat Cena. I want to say his blue gem damage is 45%. Huge upgrade over Macho here. We are still going to keep the low dom I have, and then we're going to go... Hall of Fame Snoop because he adds more blue gem damage. You could use 17k Santa. I just want to use something different um, for flat blue gem damage. Um, I think also Seamus is flat blue gem damage. Uh, whatever you got that adds blue gem damage would be the way to go. So same principle except this time we you're only able to get the Juggernaut gem out once. Um, it, although the flip side is... Um, and this one I'll do the two swipe. You could have, uh, because there's no... You could also make a five match for this too, just just to clarify. I'm going to do it for the double swipe because it's safer. Um, so you guys can see the alternate version where you swipe twice. But you... So I'm going to put it here. But you could also go for the, like I said, the, the wild card setup. We could do this. Then we could put the jug down. Then we could do the swipe and we could still win turn two. That is always an option. Uh, but I showed that last time, so I'm going to show it this way this time. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. I'm also going to bet that I don't drop a um, loot box in there, so I probably will. Pretty much same thing. Um, just safer if you're not going for that wild card. And then we will have to swipe twice. And then it should, as long as all of our gems stay, we should be looking, like I said, right around three and a half mil. Maybe a little up. Oh, there goes one juggernaut gem, so that's going to affect some of the damage. We only got nine. So we're missing 40%. So essentially, Macho isn't doing anything. And we may not get all the blues because we don't have a max dom. So we're probably two and a half mil. Yeah, two seven reduced to two two. Still really good. Um, and again, that's not Dom maxed. If Dom was maxed, the whole board would be blue. With two, it would likely be blue anyway. You can see it's still really strong. And that was losing one Juggernaut gem. Um, pretty, pretty cool. I like the way Juggernaut gems work. All right, this one I'm actually gonna run an MP steel steel build for you guys. It might take a little bit longer than normal. Uh, by the way, double fury for all of these. Um, is the way I would run them. So, I'm actually going to show the MP Steel since he has, um, black MP that he starts with. So, we're going to throw these in there. Um, Heroic Titan Crest won't work. If you were thinking, why aren't you using the Heroic Titan Crest Sika Plate, whatever you want to call it, it's because you need eight and he only makes seven. Um, and it's a row, so you can't, you can't do anything extra with that. No way to make that work, which is unfortunate. That would be cool if you could.
cheap shot or potentially twilight ritual because when you break red uh, you get purple on the screen you could also do um, bad attitude potentially um, hit blue get black to help recycle because the recycle is not necessarily a guarantee although um, this is a guarantee to fill and then as long as they have a little bit of MP when you hit this you're gonna recycle so it's basically a guarantee Anyway, we're going to go like all blast gems, so those seven gems, we at least get more damage. 25% uh, red, 100% blast, so that's 125% on those seven gems that are going to be red and blast. I'm going to start off with the MP steal, so I'm going to go butch for red MP. You could go woods and start with the black, um, but it makes sense if we're going to use the MP steal to start with that, to me anyway. Sammy, again, 50% on those seven gems seems pretty good compared to anything else we could use. Uh, again, Hogan for 2.2k because of all the surrounding stuff is always going to make sense. Um, I'm just throwing Typhoon on to show a different option because I use Hogan all the time and sometimes I get bored with that. Um, so, yeah. But Typhoon is essentially 35% on that middle row. Again, Hogan for the surrounding ones is probably more, not probably, is more damage. So, let's see this. Uh, by the way, I think he's a great uh, chase card. He maybe isn't like, here's the MP steal. Maybe isn't, he's not, he's not as strong feeling and maybe six star if I was playing him that would change. He doesn't feel as strong as KO or Mutant Seth to me, but I do think at six star triple black, that's going to make it feel a lot different. That's a lot of gems to blow up on a powerhouse, uh, which we don't see a lot. So I do think that will be pretty dang good. Um... And he's kind of right in there, right? And he, like I said, aggressive boss battle if you don't want to take Hall of Fame Taker. I think he's going to be a great choice at aggressive for boss battle. Especially being able to use the NWO plate. Um, and his Juggernaut gems against blue counter, things like that. So, I mean, you can see it doesn't hit super hard. 600k on that. Um, not a lot of ways to boost that. This is more kind of a control. A little too soon to hit the MP steal, but the NWO plate does work on it. You can uh, you can see the damage going up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it anyway, because uh, I have a black match. So why not? No reason not to, right? And it's just we're gonna hit these over and over. Uh, until we keep Ivar down. So you can see with the 6 star move, putting the multiply row above and below would let you destroy all of them. Um, I'm assuming you can see that anyway. Back to what that is uh, right here. Except uh, if you have Matt and all that. Let's go back to the MP steel. Probably should have saved that. Definitely should have saved it. Wasn't paying attention. So that's on me. I got lucky. The AI bailed me out. Thank you, AI, for dropping those gems in. Ivar's got his reds filled, so it would be very nice to finish this off. Again, I don't really see a reason to use this. Um, these, but I wanted to show these two moves, and as long as I was gonna, I, I normally what I would do is I'd run the finisher with this, right? Load the finisher, and then hit the finisher, destroy some blacks to see it. But I'm like, eh, this time I can actually show an MP steal, so I'm like, I'll do it anyway. I'll do that, um, so you guys can see the MP steal. But normally the finisher would be the better move to pair with this. I just don't know why you would do that given the other options. Um, the first build set and then this next one that we're going to see. Um, I'm going to run it with normal trainers first and then you're going to see it with huge trainers. Uh, his finisher is big. Really, really big. And it gets even bigger at 6 star. At 6 star the finisher goes up to 600k base. 
uh, which is a very big one, considering it's also a bunch of gems to destroy. So I think there's going to be some potential to run this moveset. Rem similar kind of to Super Stacy, but doesn't have the stun, is what it reminds me of. Anyway, let's get this set up. Haven't seen the finisher yet. I think we have seen everything else. Gonna have the Juggernaut gem. It's red move damage, 85k. It also helps recycle should you need it. So this first one is basically, uh, assuming you don't keep them down, you're gonna recycle, you're gonna end up using the Juggernaut move. So you're gonna see Dom and Snoop on there just like from the first one. Uh, and that finisher, head goes pop, 10 MP finisher, deal 389k damage, choose eight gems to destroy. So we're going to have almost double the base damage at 6 star. Not quite, but almost double. So whatever you see me hitting for on the finisher, you probably could very nearly double. Not quite, but very nearly. Um, if you, This is in case, if you don't have Priest, you can use Batista. Also keep in mind, if perks go to where there's, oops, wrong one, there's no matchy match, uh, you'd want to substitute X-Pac at the coach to get the finisher loaded turn 1. All I can go off of is where they are now. Um, I don't think they'll be that way next month personally. We will see. Again, planning on having perks always there and building your roster around perks. Not smart in my opinion. They have changed in the past. And they are likely to change in the future. So, you do not want to build your roster completely around perks. It's okay to have a few guys, uh, but you don't want to do that. And you want to diversify your roster and have all kinds of different um, options and people that play differently um, for when perks do change or when things come up like lane bonuses and things like that so you can take advantage of them. All right, for sure, NWO played if you have it. You might be thinking, why is the... Um, the blues plate on there that's just um to help recycle so you can destroy three green and get um three blue to get back to the blue if you don't keep them down so there's the entourage let's make it happen captain uh whenever you use the springboard um what is it body bag uh that fires the nwo plate giving you 75 percent more damage on your finisher so you can see we're going to start out at 1 million base um, at 6 star, like I said, probably 2 million um, with this setup right in that range, maybe a little bit less, but right about there. It's going to go up because of the NWO plate when we hit this. And we are up to 1.3 mil. That would be like close, probably 2.5 at 6 star. Juggernaut gem gets buffed too. This is almost 300k. Now we have our jugs out. And we want to destroy some blue gems to recycle if we need to. Also try and create cascades. Um, I'm okay with losing some of the Juggernaut gems to be perfectly honest. It's not a big deal because I want to go for the W if at all possible. Um, blue, we'll bring that red down and we'll get a red three matchy match and we'll leave these blue alone so we can get that red matchy match, green cascade, pick up that red and that will give a five match there. Let's see how this works out. Mm -hmm. 1.5 mil on the finisher. Ivar can't kick out. Um, obviously, um, that would get bigger the next turn, assuming you can load it right away. Juggernaut gems are there to bail you out if needed. Let's see that with the much more rare trainers. I think this will be interesting, uh, this moveset, to see how it scales. Uh, the thing, I do, like I said, I like about Ray is there's a lot of options here depending on what medals and stuff you have, what trainers you have, there's a lot you can do. Obviously, being me, I like the first moveset with the Juggernaut Gems, but a few perks if your sub lasts 
four turns longer. I hate that move set, right? So this month, I'm not going to like that at all. Um, when If those go away and you have lower sub turns, uh, then I'm going to like it. Of course, you could also use the sub reduction coach, but then you're losing out on potential there too. Um, so keep that in mind. All right. Priest for 150%. And like I said, we are, oh, let me, did I not? I didn't switch the graphic. Oh, well. My bad. Anyway, it's Gooker and the other Snoop. So you're going to see all of the move damage trainers. So you can ignore what's on the screen there. Because I forgot to put the graphic in because I'm a big scrub. You could fix that in post, but who wants to do that? You can see even before the medals were over a million. On the finisher. Mm, da, 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 da. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. <laughs> oh, I forgot to check before and after on the finisher for you. Oh well, you'll see it after the NWO plate hits it. Uh, 1.9 million. So, probably be pushing like 4... Eh, 1.9. Like 3.5 mil at 6 star with that. And this is not a tier 5 medal. It's not like double takedown if you wanted to do that. That's, it's just Fury all the way. Um, yeah. None of this matters. I mean, he's not going to kick out, so. I say that, so that means he's going to kick out. I mean, all the damage is in the finisher, really, anyway. You can see. Big, beefy boy finisher. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, I think Ray is really well designed. There's a lot you can do. Uh, I think six star moveset is absolutely the way forward, which is okay. Because that gets the the max advantage from his training or yeah, coach ability, which is actually phenomenal. Three extra gems um, generate at the coach basically replaces a trainer completely, um, just one off. So that is pretty fantastic. As far as powerhouses and where it goes um, in the pantheon of powerhouses, which is really crowded, any other class. And I think you'd be like, oh man, this guy is clear, uh, going to the top, pretty much. Let me make an argument for Acrobat. So, it's really interesting, like, where he fits in. Um, I don't think he's as strong as Seth and KO. I do think he's stronger than Taker. Taker has uh, really good all-around boss battle potential, but honestly, so does Ray, uh, with the NWO plate, assuming he can recycle without swiping, which isn't necessarily a guarantee. Also, the triple black is going to be really good too, um, and should be quite quick. It's too bad the Titan plate doesn't work, so I feel like, I think Taker's going to be better at boss battle unless it's, maybe even if it is blue, potentially, because he doesn't have to swipe to activate the Jugger gems and that sort of stuff, so I kind of want to say he fits in behind these two, um, right even with Taker, right? All mine are leveled. Um, as far as who I would take six star, uh, Seth would get the nod for me first because he's, um, aggressive and so good at boss battle. So is Ray, but Seth is so good. I mean, Ray being aggressive that he would get the nod first, I think, cause I care more about boss battle and two extra greens is really good anyway. Um, Obviously, three would be great on someone like Riddle, for example. But uh, the traps and stuff, um, it's evading me, like, who has traps countdowns that generate green right off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure they're there. Uh, still, if you have the drip plate and uh, gears, for sure. I don't think you even necessarily need the gears. Hall of Fame Andre, best powerhouse in the game with the drip plate. That's I hate saying that, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. 
that's where I think he fits in. He's right kind of there. A lot of people have already invested in Seth and KO. That's probably the only downside um, to Ray. But I do think a great chase, a worthy chase, amazing coach, uh, and exactly the kind of superstars I like seeing for the chase. Good variety, good usage, and um, a pretty dang strong card too. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Sorry it's late. I was in Disneyland, and there's a lot uh, you can do with Ray, so I wanted to make sure um, the video is up to my normal standards, so hopefully it was worth the wait. And uh, remember to like, subscribe, and share as that really helps me out. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and good luck out there.